Well, ladies and gentlemen, do not adjust your set. That's right. Your screen is correct. You are not seeing things. I, the Gino, have foolishly been handed the reins to the mighty, mighty Big Trey Variety Show. Turn off the music. I will not turn off the music, Dave. Turn I will off. be bringing the photographic funk from the back of the trunk, Dave. Turn off the <laughs> copyrighted music. All right, fine. I can't play music. That's fine. I was going to, you know what? You, you, you just, you're harshing me, Dave. I was going to mute you, man. I, that's fine. You can't. <laughs> I don't, I don't you're think the I host, but muted. I was going to mute you. I, I'd say you would not be the first guy that has muted me. But anyway, <laughs> Mighty that's Trey. That's the drinking game for tonight. Every time somebody mutes Gino, take a drink. Well, that's there's a lot of there's a lot of alcohol going out. Not gonna last very long. No, yeah, you and the like the skinnier people are not gonna make it. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'll I'll be here. So anyway, we got a great show for everybody tonight. The mighty Trey is uh, where is he? He's like in Japan, hanging out with the founders of Stocksy or 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 MySpace. Uh, yeah, MySpace. That's right. One of those things, and so, but he is going to pop in. He's going to be in for like five minutes. So everybody, when he gets here, act like you like it. You know that Trey's here. Just amuse him. He'll leave, and then we'll go back to having fun. So, and um, so, I'm I'm the substitute teacher in the box for the day. Everybody's everybody, feel free to abuse me. So who we ha what do we have going on tonight? What, look at this. Look at this lineup. We got Jaime Ibarra. Sexiest man on the planet, right there. Look at him. He's drinking coffee. He's playing cool. He's trying to act like he doesn't know it's true, but he knows it's true. Right next to him, we have Joe As You Were, or as his mother calls him, Joe Azure. There he is. Hey, there he is. We got the Lotus Carol, the most Hello. sarcastic mom ever. We've got uh, Michael Bonacore. Look at Michael Bonacore over there. He's just chilling. Well, he's got the green. Good Green green of destiny. Yep, he's got it. And uh, we got Nikolai McCrary. Nikolai, say hi to everybody. Hey, everybody. There he is. All right, enough. Scott, give a little room for everybody else, Nikolai. All right, he's talking too much. And, of course, we have Dave Veffer, possibly the sexiest man on the planet. Possibly. Yeah, we got we got what is his name? Brad Pitt. You got your you got your who? Uh, who else? Who would be on that list? L Leonard DiCaprio. <laughs> and then you got Dave Veffer. Yeah, People that, Magazine keeps calling, but I say no, no thanks. They, they call me all the time just asking me, hey, is there any way you can get us an in with Dave Veffer? And I'm like, get in line. <laughs> but anyway, that's our – and so tonight we're going to be talking on a, a bunch of cool topics. But first, let's get to know everybody. First, let's start left to right. We'll go with Big Jaime Ibarra. Jaime, what does everybody need to know about you? <clears throat> I'm a, I am a artistic por portrait photographer. Um, in Austin, Texas, and and I do music as well, but mainly photography. And um, I'm mainly an educator. I make my money not by not by actually being paid by clients, but I just basically shoot what I want and then teach how I do what I do. So, where can people find you? Ibarrafoto.com. Um, That's two up. R's, right? I B A R I B A R R A and then photo. Right. Com. And I just launched with my fiance, I launched uh, Ibarra Squared dot com. You can also type Ibarra and then the number two dot com. Um, that's more for print sales and tutorial videos and um, we made a few coupon codes for anyone who's wanted to Maybe maybe hesitated to buy any of the tutorial videos that I've produced with uh, everyone anyone watching tonight. We're gonna give out coupon codes that we made. They're good for the next couple three days or so. Well, you know, if I could play that uh, that uh, Who song from earlier, except for Dave, right now, I'd be going yeah! <laughs> right after that. That's good news. Coupon codes. I like it. So. Uh, who would you say, uh, Jaime, is the best-looking person that you've ever personally given photographic lessons to? No, no. <laughs> okay. All right. okay, fine. Second best-looking. Second best-looking person ever. It's me. It's it's me. I'm the answer. 
I know you're you're ah, whatever. You knew it was me all along. You're just messing with me. All right. Yeah, that's right. All right. So <laughs> by the way, I have taken lessons from Jaime. It's amazing. Uh, the stuff he shows you actually kind of blew my mind. I had taken so many notes. I had to go over them for weeks just to make sure I could figure everything out. Because so I I can personally recommend taking lessons from Jaime. And just so people know, you don't have to live in Austin, right, to take lessons from you. No, I can. Uh, you can do it live, one on one, over the internet. And I'm just to cut a few corners, I also have a slightly less expensive version that you can uh, buy. It's, it's a full synopsis uh, in a video tutorial format. Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted people to know that you don't have to come to Austin in order to to, to learn from the great Jaime Abada. All right. Look, I just rolled my R when I said all right. Just hanging around you, I suddenly feel Latin. All right, next we're going to go to Joe As You Were. Big, <laughs> Big Joe, tell everybody what they need to know about Joe, especially hey, hey, how, to, how to say your last name. Yeah, my name is uh, Joe Azure. You can uh, uh, find my work at uh, Joe, uh, I guess, jazurephotography.com. Um, I've also got uh, some stock work up on the new uh, Stocksy site as I'm starting to, uh, to fill that out. Um, That's a sore and, subject with me, Joe. Well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've been rejected by Stocksy. I'm not. I'm not letting it bother me though. I've only brought it up five shows in a row. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, I'm also I've uh, do my handle my print sales through uh, through Smug Mug. Uh, you actually get there through the jajphotography.com site uh, or address, I should say. Um, I'm uh, mainly, I guess, a landscape and uh, nature photographer. I uh, do like to travel. Um, and do some travel photography. Usually when I'm traveling, it's I'm taking pictures of landscapes. Um, coming up, got a uh, couple weeks in Iceland in June. I guess is the is kind of the next uh, big road trip. Um, it's been actually quite a year for road trips so far. Where last year was one after the other. So I'm uh, kind of looking forward to getting the, getting the ball rolling again. All right, that's awesome. Joe, thank you very much for being here tonight. I Thanks appreciate it. I've been looking forward to hanging out with you. All right, next we have the mighty Lotus Carol. You know her, you love her. You may be able to live without her, but she's here anyway. Am I mighty? Yes, you are. You know you're mighty. Okay. Anybody well, that has a million followers is mighty. Come on. I'm the mighty Lotus Carol, and yes. I'm an Austin-based photographer and blogger. Um, I help out Juan Gonzalez with Drink and Click. Um, which is a hybrid photo walk pub crawl. Um, so if you're interested in that, go to drinkandclick.com. We've got chapters around the world. I also help, um, I co-own and moderate a self-portraiture community on Google+, Plus, um, which is one of the things I do very often in photography is self-portraits. So we've got 15 really talented moderators there who are posting tutorials and we're doing monthly challenges. We've got some really cool sponsors. We've got Smug Mug, Think Tank Photo, and Capturing Couture. So if you want to get a little challenged on self-portraiture, come check us out. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but has your hair suddenly turned a different shade than the last yeah. time I saw you? Yeah, it just does that sometimes. I don't really know why. Mm. All right, Red. Well, uh, we appreciate. Uh, does everybody like Lotus's hair? <laughs> Thanks, Gina. <laughs> and Gina's muted. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, what you didn't get is Roger Daltrey going. <laughs> That's fine. All right. Next, look who we have. Michael, have you ever been on one of these hangouts before? Yeah, of course. Many. I've actually been on Trey's show. This is my second time, and uh, I don't think I'm good enough for Trey himself, though, because he never invites me. But <laughs> the last time was guest hosted by Karen. Oh. So I've got Gino and Karen who like me enough to invite me. But well, I'll tell you this: I have never actually been invited on this show by Trey either. I just keep showing up. So <laughs> it's attrition. I'm wearing him down. All right, Sunny, <laughs> Michael. You've got some of my favorite images on Google+. Plus. I love checking it. Whenever I'm like, just like, I got to go check out some good stuff. That's why I invited you and Joe. Because you and Joe are the two guys. There's a couple. There's probably about five or six guys. But y'all are two of them that I'm like, 
if I just need to be inspired, I'm going to go check out your stuff. So tell people where they can find out all about the goodness of Michael Bonacore. Thanks, Gino. That means a lot, man. Um, yeah, you can find my work on mb-photography-sf.com. Uh, I'm based in San Francisco, and I work at SmugMug, which is a, a photo sharing website. Uh, we are an all-in-one solution for photographers. And I went upstairs straight to Chris McCaskill's office uh, this afternoon, and I said, I want to give something away tonight during the show. And uh, he gave me a 16 by 24 metal print from Bay Photo. So this is a print where if you enter and you win, you can have any of your photos printed on a beautiful 16 by 24 metal. Wow. Photo. So the way to enter is in the event on Google Plus that is being run. And uh, I think I think Dave uh, Trey shared it a while yeah, ago. Yeah, if you go to Trey's profile and scroll down a little bit, you'll find the event. Yep, just uh, go ahead and comment on the event with a link to your photo that you would love to see printed on a 16 by 24 metal lab bay photo, and we will select the winner and announce it towards the end of the show. So if I kind of maybe slip you a little 20 in the mail, that's probably going to come my way, right? Actually, it's $100 value, and for you to win, you have to yeah. pay me 500 Gino. 500 all right. You've got a quantile multiplier in effect. Here. Just sell all the crap on your desk back there, and that should be enough. <laughs> well, I do. I've got uh, children's books. Uh, I've got some sing-along stuff. There so, you go. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, and uh, once again, wh wh give your website again. It's uh, mb-photography-sf.com, and uh, I primarily do landscapes and travel photography. I also Could work for Colby Brown's company. Could you have made that a little more complicated for people? Yeah, I know. Just find me on Google Plus. That's where I post all, right. all my work. What about what about the bonacore.com? Why didn't you see that? <laughs> That's right. If you've ever wanted a uh, bonacore thong, you can buy one on the bonacore.com. Right. There's now. A, there's already a bonacore.com site. It has nothing to do with you. No, the bonacore.com is an online store that I want to tell you I did not create. It was an April Fool's Day joke, but the proceeds. For any sales, do go to charity. 100% of the proceeds. So if anybody does happen to buy a Bonacore uh, thong or a trucker hat or a T-shirt, all the proceeds go to charity. And you yeah. care about the charity so much that you're going to soon. You're going to post a self-portrait of yourself modeling the thong, right? Mm. That's the plan. I'm going to do about 20 more push-ups, and yeah. I should be ready. Yeah, but don't don't get in any cold water right before you do the modeling, or it could just it could just say Bono. Yeah, on the, uh, no core in there. Yeah, is yeah. that going to be uh, your smug mug superhero outfit? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, who all? I, I I'm on uh, Smug Mug. Uh, I know Lotus. You're on Smug Mug, right? Yes, I'm, yeah, any, I'm on Smug Mug. Anybody else in here? I am. There you go. I Joe, use it for as personal your reasons. Yes, I love Smug Mug. Smug Mug is amazing, and um, I, I got a free one-year starter, you know, gift. I don't even remember how, but uh, so when my year was up, I signed up again. So now I'm a full-fledged paying member. I'm no longer just, you know, skating by on the on the free list. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so you're making money off of me. Good to have you on board. All right, Nikolai. No doubt, and I think this is easy. Uh, to say uh, Jaime was close. I'll say Jaime was close, but Nikolai, I think you definitely have the coolest name in the Hangout. So, right. Nikolai McCrary, tell us all about the Big Nick. All right. Um, don't have quite as cool stories as these last guys, but uh, I'm, I guess, a uh, relative newbie to the world of photography. I've been shooting for a couple years. Uh, I live in Austin, and I work with a bunch of startups here. Um, I don't know. Uh, where can I go from there? Where, uh, well, you have a website, or where can yeah, people yeah, yeah, find yeah. the work? Website, uh, NikolaiMcCrary.com. Um, you know, it's just kind of basic right now. I don't have a smug mug, but I'm actually working on <laughs> that. I think I need to get one and uh, join the rest of the group. Yeah. Well, I will tell you this, Nikolai. Do not ever let the lack of facts get in the way of a good story. That's one thing I live by. So if you don't actually have a cool story to tell, just make one up. That's what I do. You know, so all the stuff you hear me say on the show, very little of it accurate. So don't worry about <laughs> accuracy. All right. And it is good advice. That's advice I live by right there. 
Dave Veffer. Yes. Where can people find out about the goodness that is Dave Veffer? PlusDave.com. That will take uh, you to my Google Plus profile. And, and, stuff. There, and there is there is no plusser Dave in the world. Look at that chair you're sitting in. That's a yeah. plus chair right there. Plush Dave. I said plus Dave. <laughs> oh, plush. Hey, you know, you were talking about the Karate Kid and the Crane uh -huh. Kick and that, can't that, defend. Right. Karate yeah. Kid 2, the guy defends it. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't see Karate Kid yeah, 2. My I wife so sent me the link down. today. My wife sent me the link today because she was watching... Uh -huh. What you said cracked her up, so she found she really likes the movies, so she found that scene for me. So you're saying in Karate Kid 2 that who Miyagi or somebody else? No, Daniel else? does the crane kick and the guy just right. blocks it straight up. Blocks <laughs> it. Yeah, <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. Well, that kind of ruins my whole thing, though. I thought I had this little niche on how to defend a crane kick. Come to find out, it's already in the movie. Yeah, so that's that's kind of a bummer. That's funny, I thought. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. bringing me down though, but that's all right. That's what I. All do. right, so. <laughs> Here's our topic today, folks. What we were talking about, and I'm glad I'm glad we came up with this because uh, I already know for a fact that uh, somebody in this chat completely disagrees with me, and that's awesome. And, and that is, how do you find your mojo? You know, how do you find your uh, voice or style? I see a lot of people in these Trey shows. You know, you can go over to Trey's site, uh, stuckincustoms.com, and there's a, a little place in there. Right now, you can do it and type out questions. And one of the questions I see a lot is, you know, how do I find my style? You know, how do I find my voice in photography? I'm kind of all over the map. And so I thought that was a really good topic. And uh, Jeremy Cowart actually uh, did an interview recently, and he and that wasn't the point of the interview, but in it he talked about that and how people spend a lot of time and energy buying software, buying lenses, doing all of this purchasing, and instead of trying to figure out um, you know what it is that they want to do with photography how they want to represent themselves and he was just kind of you know posticulating a little bit about that and so I thought that was a good topic um, I, I'll go ahead and start off with my thoughts on it just to get the ball rolling but everybody else just feel free to kick in with your thoughts and interrupt and that is that for me anyway my experience I, I've uh, owned I've been shooting for probably about seven years Nikolai is actually the guy that got me thinking about this the most because I've been I met Nikolai a couple of years ago and uh, Apparently that was right when you started getting into photography. You were coming on photo walks and whatnot, right? Yeah, pretty much Yeah, Lotus and, and Juan Gonzo were doing photo walks and met Nikolai there. He had such a cool name. He stuck out and um, David Bowden and his big red-headed son would show up. That was always cool. So um, but I noticed in the last two years, Nikolai has gotten a kind of a style. Like, I can actually look at a photo now and think, oh, I bet you out of all of this group in this, uh, you know, little photo walk that just happened, I bet that's Nikolai's picture right there. And I'm almost always right, because he has a feel to his work. And for me, it was the same way. For a long time, I really struggled to try to find some sort of a style to what I was doing. And I couldn't, I was just all over the map. And then uh, I kind of just organically found my way to what it is that I'm comfortable with, what pictures or what I want my images to look like. And so I guess my uh, Malcolm Gladwell writes about the 10,000 hour theory that it takes 10,000 hours to do anything to be great at it. I disagree with that. I think it's closer to 5,000 hours. But um, so I, I think for me, that is the answer to the question, which is kind of really basic answer, which is that there isn't anything that you can do other than take. 10,000 pictures, process 10,000 images, and somewhere along the way you will organically figure out what it is that you want to represent. And for me, that's how it came out. For a long time I tried to be Trey. I really wanted to be Trey Rackliffe Jr. And uh, I finally just realized that that wasn't even really what I wanted to do, and so I kind of went off in a slightly different direction. So how about you guys? Joe, you look like you're just ready to jump all over this. Um, you know, I'm, I'm actually fairly you know, fairly recent to the photography game as well, like, you know, like, like a lot of people. Um, in terms of style and kind of, kind of developing that, I think, um, for me, uh, a, a lot of repetition, you know, and just doing a lot of different things, um, you know, actually like studying what other people do. And, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a computer programmer by, you know, by trade and, you know, I, I, I probably overly analyze things um, but you know for me really like looking at what a lot of different people did you know uh, you know Jaime being one Trey being another you know a lot of different people and really trying to 
you know, see what they do and how they do it and understand the, the, the nuts and bolts of the processing. Um, and that turned into doing, you know, to spending a lot of hours at it. And I think through a lot of that, that repetition, you know, I started to kind of find the things that really resonated with me. But by doing all that, I also, I think I kind of, you know, got to a point where I was also like, well, you know, now I, I think I have an idea on how to make my images look a lot of different ways. Um, and then actually doing some reading um, of uh, David Dusherman, actually, and, and reading what he had to say about, well, you know, don't necessarily worry about all that, you know, in terms of the, the skills, the technical, of what it's going to take to get your pictures. Like, just figure out what you want to say before you're even picking up your camera. Um, and I think things really kind of started to click for me, you know, uh, when I added that into the mix of being able to actually understand the technical, understand how to process and get, get a look, but it didn't really kind of gel until I, I, I took that other... So do you, you feel like it's kind of a chicken or the egg kind of thing? Like, do you think that you need to develop your processes and your skills first, and then your voice will come later, or try to find your voice and then worry about the skills? You know, you know, I don't necessarily think that one, you know, has to come after the other. I, I, I wish I would have understood maybe even earlier kind of what I wanted to say instead of trying to like learn how to say everything. Um, you know, but I, I think then when. Uh, you know, when I kind of did start figuring out, well, what was it that I wanted to say? What you know, what was my vision for for the for the image? Then it certainly because I had spent so much time learning how to do stuff. Then it came much quicker. Then it was then it was like a very quick quick progression, I think, and and mm -hmm. the overall kind of quality of my images and and you know, um, not, you know, I wasn't I wasn't shooting so much random stuff. I kind of quickly progressed to like, oh well, you know, before I leave the house at four in the morning. I, I know what it is that I'm looking for, and you know I only want one shot, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to get it, or maybe I won't. But you know, if the conditions aren't there, which is pretty common in landscape stuff. You leave the house at four in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> he does. Yeah, mm. that's uh, dedication. Yeah, that's disturbing. Is what that is. <laughs> that's so, why he has those Golden Gate beautiful sunrise right. over the Golden Gate. With fog and because he's the only one willing to get up at that hour yeah well I've seen all of those images for sure a hundred times so there I guess I guess there's something to be said although I think what my method would be is just stay up till four in the morning that would be better <laughs> I do now, try to do that too sometimes the bonacorn I don't know you end up passing out <laughs> <laughs> so hi mate you are a person who has a highly stylized uh, feel to your work. I mean, I, I think literally pretty much everybody that knows your work could spot it and say, well, that's, that's Jaime Ibotta's work right there. So where, how, did, how did that come about for you? Did you already kind of see that you wanted to go that way, or through the process, how did you end up there? That's a good question. I, I think, thought so, I, too. I think that... Um, um, I, I would I would liken the the way that I got to where I am with photography it was like with I was a musician before I was a photographer, and I was was able to sit and play along with like note for note. I got so good at the guitar I could play Eric Johnson stuff note for note. I could play along with Eddie Van Halen note for note, and I was really good at doing that. But then I realized after I conquered all these songs that I so admire that I went, I'm never going to be these people ever. You know, there's those already, there's already an Eric Johnson, there's already Pat McKinney, there's already Eddie Van Halen, I'm never going to be them ever. And that's what made me go, I need to make my own music, I need to do my own thing. And I, I really try to not compare myself to other people as much as possible. And I think with photography too, I think we all, we all go through the same thing where you have to go through a period of emulating other people. Uh, that's how you learn the mechanics of it and, the, and all the isms that are involved. But eventually you have to say, well, how much of, you know, how much of what I'm doing is me? You know, and if, if you're concerned about being an individual in art, just in general, a lot of people maybe are not, and they're happy doing, you know, just replicating, replicating other people's art, and that's an accomplishment in and of itself. 
personally, this is just a personal opinion, but I'm not happy doing that. You know, like I, would, I like to think that I'm going to leave some kind of mark on the world when I go. You know, and you only you're only able to do that if you're an individual. And all the musicians that I admire, I can I can hear that I can hear, you know, a certain guitar player. He can play two or three notes on the guitar, and I know instantly that it's him. Not because I knew the song he was playing, it was just that there's a, there's a unique, identifiable thing about the way he plays, and it's the same yeah. way with. I think about Stevie Ray Vaughan. You know, he'll play a Jimi Hendrix song, and you know instantly that ain't Jimi Hendrix. That's Stevie Ray Vaughan. You know, and right. vice versa. You know, so you don't, you don't, my, my take on it is I don't want to be the guy who can do all these different things. You know, I want to be the guy that does the thing he does. Like, oh, you're the guy that does that. You know, I think, I think as an artist, that's what I respect the most in other artists is, is consistency and, 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 and vision and, and just a very clear, like almost myopic view of, of of what they do, like I, I know what I want to do, um, but that wasn't always that way. You know, it, it takes time to develop that. You know, sadly, there is no, there is no easy answer to this question. Mm -hmm. I think, I think um, what uh, what Joe was saying earlier, you you have to you have to do this. You you know, shoot. You're like all your shots are all over the map because you have to try all these different things to figure out what it is that you want to do. Well, I've always I've known about myself that what I want to do when I'm searching for it, I always think it'll find me. It's easier to let to just relax and let that happen and don't don't get so concerned about gear and technical things. Um, just just figure out what it is that you want to do. You know, yeah. don't, don't, yeah. Try, don't don't try to rush it because yeah. you just yeah. it's just it becomes a it's it's contrived. I think if you do that, it'll it'll find you. If yeah. You just, well, that that old. Uh, Phrase, I think it's probably Mr. Miyagi that came up with it was, uh, you know, when, when the student's ready, the teacher will arrive. I think that's true because when you are ready, you will find what you're looking for. And when you're not ready, you can't find it because you don't even know what you're looking for. Nope. I yeah. agree. Now, look at so With what Jaime just said, hugely. I, yes. Um, but I, I know that you are not a big fan of well, saying, here's my style. I'm not a big fan of asking, how do you find your style? Okay. How do I find, or asking someone else, how do I find my style? And I think, I think that worrying overly about what your style is is a pitfall that's going to mm -hmm. prevent you from developing it. Right. <laughs> so instead, I agree with that. You need to just do mm -hmm. and be and make mm -hmm. the art that's inside of you. And eventually, Man, that's, some Yo that's some Yoda stuff right there. <laughs> eventually, your style will become apparent to you instead of you know, uh, thinking about it and analyzing it so much, just let go and make, you know, just create. Hmm. Who you are is going let to be... Go and make. Like, um, First you must like do. trying to force yourself into a mold. You know, what is my personality? Instead of just being and then looking back and saying, this is who I am. Hey, Dave, we're not going to get in trouble because I just did a Yoda voice, are we? <laughs> I, I hope not. All right. Every time I do anything pop culture, Dave's over there swatting me. Yeah, I'm laying down the hammer, man. That's what I'm I know you are. You're the big band hammer in this room. All right. So, uh, Nikolai, uh, do you even agree with that, what I said earlier, that it seems to me like I have seen this kind of style informing your work now? Uh, or do you not even really think that that's true? No, I find it interesting. I never actually thought about having my own distinctive style. I'm kind of in that stage where I'm bouncing around, trying different things. I've, you know, started to emulate different photographers that I that I admired, you know. As you I, don't have to mention my name, come on. Yeah, okay. you know. <laughs> but um, I'm just starting to get to the stage where I'm finding different styles that, you know, there, there are styles that I can do and then there are styles that I truly derive a certain amount of enjoyment from and um, a, a different uh, excitement from. And l lately it's been street photography. I've I've gotten this, mm -hmm. this passion for street photography that I haven't found in any of the other ones that I've tried to do. I've I've bounced around with landscape and portraiture a bit, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I, and I'm sure that's going to change in the next few months as well. I'm still in that stage of trying to find um, who I am as a photographer and find my style, and I'm sure that's not ever going to be a static thing. It's it's a constantly changing mm -hmm. and constantly right. evolving process. 
But um, I guess it's, it's it's interesting to hear that I have a distinct style. Apparently, I think that may be partially because I I've kind of started off photography trying to just use the same equipment to see how much I can push those limits mm -hmm. of my equipment. So I shoot with the same lens and the same camera for everything. Uh, it's just a 85 fixed, and I guess maybe part of that is where you know the distinctive image quality comes from. But I'm not sure, and so I'm still trying to find my style and trying to figure that out. See, I think that's interesting um, that you aren't aware of what I was saying because that kind of just shows that it was something that was going on uh, organically. You weren't thinking, oh, this is going to be a style. I'm going to try to become this way. You were just becoming, uh, getting a certain flow to your work that just kind of organically came out, and I noticed it anyway. Mm -hmm. So, and I've definitely noticed huge difference, you know, even from a year ago to what you're doing. They just seem like to me, and I don't know, I don't want to put a date on it, but sometime in the last six months, it just seemed like you, you just kind of made this leap forward in your processing skills or something to where I started really taking note of your work. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Michael, Big Bono, thoughts? Well, first of all, Gino, I, I would like to thank you for... Uh, coming to me last because I had this whole Al Pacino like motivational speech about your style finding you and about your style ever changing and now everyone's stolen my thunder so oh, really, I Michael know. doesn't have a unique style to answer this question with because it's just like everybody yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry about that <laughs> I'll buy you a pack of gum you can show me how to chew it thank you that, that's my Al Pacino uh, imitation there but that was good I like that yeah, like yeah that. I, mean, I, I would totally agree with uh, with you know, especially with what Jaime said, you know, it's you don't find a, a style. A style finds you. Um, the type of photography that you're interested in finds you. Uh, you know, I used to always be a landscape guy. You know, I started with landscape, sunset, sunrise. Oh, I thought beautiful. you meant you were mowing lawns or something. Yeah, <laughs> I've done that too. I used to install carpet, mow lawns. I've done it all. But uh, but yeah, I used to be a landscape guy, and then last year. I started working for Colby Brown and his company, The Giving Lens, and we do these, you know, amazing trips around the world, uh, photography workshops. Uh, Joe came on one uh, last year, and all of a sudden, I fell in love with this travel photography, documenting the lives of the people in in other countries, and it's something I never thought I would find interesting or be addicted to, and now all of a sudden, that's all I can think about, and. You know, my, so, you know, my style has changed a lot over the years, uh, and the way I process those type of photos, uh, you know, editing-wise, is completely different than the way I edit uh, landscape. You know, landscape, I'm going for sharpness and, you know, the beautiful colors in the sky, but the street photography, I'm going more gritty, and, and you know, it's just a constantly ever-changing, uh, you know, style, and, and I don't, I can't really identify myself with style, but, you know, it's kind of like, you know, for newer photographers that ask me, how do I find kind of a style and, and what I like? You know, I tell them it's like a preset um, in Lightroom. It's not, you know, you go out, you find photographers that you envy, that you like, and you try to match what they do. But you're never going to match exactly what they do. But in that process, you're going to find a style that suits you and that clings to you. And uh, that's what it's really all about is, it's just uh, constantly exploring and trying new things, and eventually it's going to come to you. So give us a little bit of the Al Pacino now. I mean, dog day afternoon. I mean, what are we talking about here? hoo -ah! I mean, what were you going to do? That was, that, was, that was pretty bad. Forget <laughs> it. Um, so you know what? Jerry Seinfeld impression. Go ahead. Give me some Jerry. No, no, no. no I can't. Cole <laughs> oh, she just muted. Did you just mute him? <laughs> No, I have no idea. What you're... He just, he just probably let me, let me imitate what he just said. What's the deal with all this muting me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, I don't even know how you mute. How do you mute people? There's a little microphone under the thumbnail. Come on, Gino. It's your show. You should know. Come on, man. I, I don't ever mute people. I, I'm a, you know, I'm a person that wants to free people up. You know, that's what I'm all about. Um, although you know what, I forgot to do the hangout tools. I could be doing all that. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? What's that stuff? Uh, Applause. Google. Yeah, Google, Google effects. effects. Yeah, that's what I want. The Google effects. That way, every every time uh, you know uh, Bonacore does uh, some sort of an app, you know imitation. Yeah. 
<laughs> or, or, or possibly. Yes. All right. So now I got those up. I'm ready. I forgot. That's part of my whole act. So, um, you know, one of the things that Trey talks about in his new tor tor tutorial, or tutorial, whichever, is um, how that everything that he does just informs the final image that he's you know he's doing lots of stacking and layering but each one of these little things is going to inform the final image and that's the way I look at what we're talking about which is when you kind of emulate different styles Jaime talked about it Joe talked about it uh, Bono you just talked about it is that you take all of these different elements and all of those things are not going to become who you are they're just going to inform who you are yeah, what do you, does anybody agree disagree with that Nobody? All right. All of the steps you take are going to add to the end product. Yeah. You're saying, basically? Yeah, that, that you're not, in other words, if I go to Lois Carroll and I want to learn about how does Lotus do this and I would go to Jaime, it's not that I'm trying to become Lotus or Jaime, it's that I'm they, what they do is going to inform me. What the, uh, the I lessons think. that I taught from Jaime, it's not that I want to make pictures like Jaime does because I can't. But that's going to help inform how my pictures are processed in the future. Okay, so do you know what you're saying is I, I think that what you're saying is true, and I think that that is pretty much what people need to realize. I think that some people do actually try to be Jaime or Trey or you know whatever, and it and that's the pitfall, in in a sense, and that if you go into it and you do take a little from each, but realize that your end goal isn't to just reproduce Jaime's work or, or whatever, then I think that that's, you're on a smoother track than, you know, to be... Joe, did you, just, did you just pour something, Joe? Uh, maybe. All right. I, I, wrote, I think I need to catch up a little. <laughs> I also feel like, I mean, with my own work, I feel like I produce a lot of different types of end products, and I'm okay with that. I don't really... Mm -hmm. I don't have a desire for my entire body of work to have the exact same feel. Mm -hmm. uh, part of what I'm interested in doing with my photography is eliciting different emotions. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the things that I'm learning along the way help me do a little bit of something different with each photo. Um, and so I don't really have a desire for my body of work to have a definite, you know, same style across all of it. I, I really want people to consider each piece. I also don't feel really pressed to have someone see my work and know that it's mine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more desirous of someone seeing my work and having a, a, a an emotional reaction to it, whether they know it's my work or not. Sure, and I think in that sense, that's your style, and that's that's what I was talking about uh, earlier in the day when I was emailing back and forth about this, is that you do have a style, it's maybe just not a, a photographic style. Oh, so hey, when the student is ready, the teacher arrive. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, who is it? Trey, and who do you have? This a uh, founder, uh, entrepreneur, world traveler, uh, excellent photographer. <coughs> who yeah. do you have here? Fan of the LA Dodgers. It's Tom. Hey, yeah. look, uh, you know what's kind of cool? You want me to show you a few Japanese things? So every day they fold up a new little origami um, swan and put it in my room. Isn't what? that nice? I've gotten a different one every day. <laughs> <laughs> is it made out of, every day. Is it made stuff. out of flat? You know what they do? They just move them from room to room. That's been in 15 rooms this week. <laughs> they just fish them out of the garbage. And... How are you guys? How's it going? Uh, not as good as you, man. Some of those Mount Fuji pictures you guys are posting are just blowing my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom just put one up. He actually put something on Google Plus for once. Oh. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well... Really? Every time I look at uh, one of those pictures you're putting up, you know what I think, Trey? What? I think. Let me see what I think. Ah, oh, he's going to mute me. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid phone. I had a sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a drink. He, yeah, he keeps Got muting muted. me every time I do that. But anyway. <laughs> well, I see the shot now. That's, that's an awesome shot, Tom. Nice, Tom. Thank you. 
Um, hey, so uh, Lotus, you know, there's a huge group of drink and clickers here in uh, in Japan. I hear that I think they call it sake and click. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you start drink and click? Uh, Juan Gonzalez is the founder, and I'm kind of his sidekick with drink and click. Oh. Well, I, I guess I was surprised that it's all over the world. I thought it was just sort of like Austin, but no, I was shocked. Across the U.S. and then internationally, we've got chapters in Tokyo and the Netherlands, a little bit of everywhere. So it's pretty cool. I didn't know that either. I heard you talking about it earlier, and I got invited to it here, and I thought I thought it was just a thing going on here. Because one thing I've learned about Japan, people drink a lot. They like to drink. <laughs> Everybody, oh, we get some really uh, great photos from that chapter. Yeah. I'm booking my ticket to Japan as we speak. So you guys <laughs> should like join in on a drink and click while you're there if there's one scheduled. Yeah, or you know, make your own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need we need a new hobby. <laughs> it's led uh, by a guy named uh, Holger Holger uh, Furji or something. Uh, Furud. <laughs> Furud. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, Holger. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a really nice guy. I've been talking to him for years, and and one day he approached me. I leave the San Francisco drinking click, and he said, "Hey, Mike, man, what's up with that drinking click? It looks like a lot of fun." And I put him in touch with uh, Juan. I think maybe ten days later, he had his first event, and it's yeah. been huge. They do a lot of really cool stuff out there. Yeah, it's a very nice uh, photography community here. Google Plus is super active, and uh, the photographers are going nuts. It's I was. Um, I was really impressed with the people around here. Rock on. Uh -oh. You muted it, No, Dave is no. on my account. Dave is muted. Yeah. It's okay. It needs to be done. <laughs> oh, I have to drink again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it out there, Trey? It is 11.41 a.m. Hey, Michael, I'm coming to see you uh, next week at, uh, at Smug Muck. I uh, know. I canceled the trip. I was supposed what? to go to uh, supposed to go to the uh, to Arizona and Utah for about ten days, and uh, with with Colby and my buddy Casey and Peyton, and uh, I I'm leaving late just so I can stay and see you, Trey. Oh no! Uh, well, I'll make it worth your while. I was trying to actually I'm trying to plan something special at uh, Smug Mug. Curtis is setting it up, and we'll see if it, it comes to fruition. But maybe we'll do something extra special and and record it and and uh, share it out with the world. By the uh, way. I'm gonna wear my best suit just for that day. All right, wear wear this your number it. one thong, but don't yeah. don't reverse it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> by the way, everyone must think that this show is sponsored by Smug Mug, but it is not. I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, Smug Mug does not support the show. Discriminating photographers use Smug Mug, so a lot of them are in here. Yeah, We're have to talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> So, Trey and uh, and a guest, uh, do you have any thoughts on the topic du jour of finding your style? You, Tom? I was How did you find your style, Tom? I think I, I kind of agree with Lotus. Um, it's not something I think about consciously. I just shoot every day. And um, I think also kind of like Gino when I started, in many ways, you know, Trey, Trey was kind of well, definitely the person that got me into it. And so, you know, I saw his work so much that I'm sure I would emulate him, and I'm sure I still do. But on the other hand, I often look at things that we process, and I just know, like, I, I, I see the differences, and they're not conscious. I just don't do the same things that he does, and he doesn't do the same things I do. Though I think probably a lot of people would you know, think they're really similar. Like, I, I think our images are quite different now. Yeah, but probably everything that came before you even picked up a camera informs, you know, how you think and what you like, and those aren't the same experiences Trey has. And so, of course, even though you like a style, it, you'll never have that exact style, and you, and you probably, in the end, don't even want to have that same style. It's true. I, in many ways, I feel like I'm more inspired by st movies and all the all the films that I liked and sort of these landscape Lawrence of Arabia type stuff like cinematographers and that sort of thing but yeah I've never I never gave it a conscious thought I've never tried to I want to be this way or that way but just over time 
I just see myself doing the same kinds of things, and they're different than other people, and um, so I don't give it a lot of conscious thought, but I see it changing all the time, and, and in many ways, I think, I didn't hear anyone mention this, but I feel like it's almost like, it's like a technology changes your style maybe more than you think. Like when you just learn like new techniques and learn how to do things that you didn't know before, then it, you know, it gives you more freedom to do things. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, I think I'm currently guilty of shooting too much and learning too little because I'm running around shooting all the time and I really don't try to push the edge in Photoshop or Lightroom or tr I'm not trying to learn new things. And if I did, I bet my style would change a little bit because I'd just learn techniques that made the photos look different. And of course, that's that's for someone like me who's really into post-processing. But yeah, and I feel yeah. actually I've been thinking this when I get home because I'm I'm going back. I've been here for a month, and I'm going to be in LA for a while, which is where I live. And I was kind of thinking of actually Jaime. I want to take your class, and I I want to I want to do I want to learn a bunch of different things and just see once I have all these techniques where that sort of leads me in a new direction. So yeah. I'm planning to do some serious YouTubing. That's a great, great you know, By the way, whenever Tom and I are on camera talking together, uh, do you know what it reminds me of? I don't know if you guys saw uh, Best in Show, but it always reminds me of uh, when these two were on, you know, talking about raising a dog. All right, which one are you? <laughs> well, that kind of leads to my question, which is that uh, I know that in Japan, you know, the rooms are kind of small. Are you guys sharing that double bed behind you? <laughs> <laughs> no, we have two rooms on, on two different floors. No, uh, didn't we hear for a they have separate do. origami swans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, we don't, we don't share swans. We have our own two swans. <laughs> That's yeah. comforting. We very did, comforting. We did try to find a capsule hotel. We wanted to go stay in one of those things where they just like yeah microwave. Well, I I've had an idea for a business kind of like that forever. Which you know when you go to a restaurant, at least me, you eat and you feel like taking a nap immediately. I don't even want to drive home. They should have those little <laughs> capsules in the back of the restaurant, like with a coin-operated thing, and you just nap all you want back there. You know, if, and that's a little money maker for the restaurant. You get to nap it out. You might even nap out and go right back for more. If that nap is good for you. They have a valve that keeps a constant flow of wine going into your mouth while you're napping, too. How is that not a winner? I'm down with that. Yeah, I'm going for some VC on this, venture capital. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start it right here in Austin. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, well, we'll let you get back to it. I didn't want to interrupt too much. You guys had a good, good flow going and good discussion. So um, you guys get back into it. We're going to run. We're jumping on a, a bullet train. I'm going to go up north. There's a... Um, Sakura, which are the cherry blossoms, they've already bloomed here in Tokyo, which is sort of in the middle of the country. And on the, the weather report, they, they have like five minutes where they show where the cherry blossoms are blooming. It's a big national thing. So it kind of sweeps up, up the country up north. So we're going to go up north and see if we can take some photos. Hi. Uh, hi. Great. Hi. All right. Well, uh, say hi to Kim Jong-un. I know he's there in Japan. <laughs> And uh, I like to stay up on my politics, Trey. I know you're impressed. <laughs> Thanks for dropping in. Oh, y'all, look at them. They're frozen in time. Two young lovers. What can you do? <laughs> I, I just want to say I ran into Trey and Tom at a uh, Giants game last year. <clears throat> they were walking through the stands with their tripods. And I was like, man, who are those two guys with tripods? And then I noticed it was Trey. And I hadn't met Tom before. Um, you know, and I sat and talked to them for about five or ten minutes. And but if I had known Tom was a Dodger fan, man, I would have had him kicked out of that stadium. For real? Yeah, yeah. Chavez Ravine cannot hold that man. So that's well, not stadium, think, but close. Well, no, I'm talking hey, about for his sake. Guys, he has to go to other stadiums. Yeah. <laughs> hey, any guys know if, uh, if Trey and Tom are playing on head of the Burning Man again this year? I was going to ask. I know Trey. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Good. Then I'll see him there. Uh, oh, look, they're off. Off to see the cherry blossoms. I wonder if they'll hold hands when they take pictures. <laughs> should be an amazing, magical moment. Well, fellas, and uh, fellow, fell, I, don't, I don't know, woman, 
Um, <laughs> you like a dude. It's okay. All right, dudes. Uh, how about uh, we get into a little photo sharing? I think we beat the topic du jour into the ground. I think if we were to sum, we would say that you don't necessarily need a style and that if you try to go after and find a style, that it probably won't happen, but that eventually, if you just keep learning and going along, a style may or may not come to you. Don't worry about it. Just have fun along the way. Does anybody disagree with that? Go. No. If you do, I'm going to mute. disagree with having fun. Yes. <laughs> yeah, do whatever. Do whatever makes you feel good. Uh, Dave, don't say that to me, big fella. <laughs> Got that except, come hither look on your face. Except on your phone. Oh, okay, that's right. All right. So, how about a little photo sharing? Hi, man. Your your mic is muted. Oh no, it's not. No, it's not. All right. Um, I'm just not talking. <laughs> yeah, your mouth is muted <laughs> just by nature, I guess. Um, so, how about showing us? Do a little screen share. We want to see some of that Ibarra goodness. Yeah. Well, let's see. I that. love that stuff. Uh, Jaime's work is amazing. Yeah, you just it. can take a little bit and just tap it right in there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay. Well, let, I'll show you first. This is this is the 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 photo that was mentioned earlier. This is this is my lady at the at the drinking click. It was really cool that that um, the the bowling uh, alley let us. They they opened agreed to open up two of the lanes at midnight, and and Juan Gonzalez is is holding the 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 light. He's he's just outside to add to the frame there. Wow. And, uh, so, was it a conscious decision to have her three fingers mirroring the crown? No, or she's was just, that just really, serendipity. She's just really good in front of the camera. I didn't even notice that until afterwards. That's a that? that's a really cool little little uh, side thing there. I just asked her if she meant to do that. She said no. She just posed. I think I think subconsciously she probably saw the crown. And when she when she sat down to do this, she probably emulated it without even thinking about it. Hmm. She's a professional. Awesome. Model. She's a professional model, so. Oh yeah. This professional is professional. Awesome is what she is. Yeah, and this is uh, I don't I don't do a lot of contract work, but I couldn't turn down. This is a really really good musician from Pakistan, and most of that lead that I got commissioned to do his CD cover shot for. That's um, really nice. nice. Guy's really, really good too. I'll, Love I'll, that flare. I'll put a link up to his video that he just did. Men uh, with scarves, who can say no? <laughs> <laughs> he had a couple of scarves that they had to choose from. And really, I've been working with you know, just moved into the new house, so I haven't been doing a lot of work. But I just my 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 artist rep in Amsterdam just just commissioned me to. They, they're ready to have me submit new work, and they wanted more. Um, you've probably seen this photo. This this is from a while back, but they want more. Mm. They want more of this. But there's so much post production involved uh, in in these shots, and all those butterflies were added in post. And then the body paint on her is that was done. That's that's for real. I didn't do that in post production. That was twelve thirteen. That was yeah. That was twelve or thirteen hours and. Mm -hmm. and Body paint, and hair, and makeup, and everything to get all that done, which I had nothing to do with. But that's every the, morning for Lotus. A lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the. You're really a man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I may proceed. Um, a lot of the butterflies that are on her, like a part of the body paint, those are actually silk butterflies that were that we bought from this lady in Turkey, and. And to get them onto onto the model, I had, they had to be cut out of this. Um, they're sort of they're, they're silk butterflies that were mounted on this backing material, and, and you have to cut them out one by one. And, and while the while the body paint was being done, um, I'm I'm chopping butterflies off of the off of the backing, and um, just to show you what was. Sorry, I don't really have a lot of new photos to show you. I'm just showing you kind of behind the scenes. Now, so, is that Jessa? Is that Jessa no. Peters? Nope. No. no. Okay. No, it is not. Um, these are the these are the butterflies. As I would cut them off and remove them from the backing, and then kind of glue them to the ends of these metal posts that I 
bought and just shot them at arm's length and um, just extracted them one by one and put them into the into the photo. I love how you applied blur to some of them and then some of them you had really sharp. It looks awesome. It was like yeah, like like this the big the big monarch in the foreground. I felt like uh, I just had to use my imagination. Like if that was right in front of my lens, it would be pretty blurry. Yeah, you know, and the one right next to her nose likely would not be. But um, just what I'm doing now is slowly building a few more of these. So you see, this is the raw shot that I've started working on, and this is what it is now. I've I've yet to I've yet to lay in butterflies into this one but there's the before and the after yeah wow. I can just I can open up Photoshop and just show you kind of what's going on in this but um, uh, lots of layers lots of layers and um, Photoshop will open up eventually well it is opening up if anyone has any questions or comments now's the time <laughs> so afterwards in the show notes uh, Dave you're gonna put in Jaime Barra's uh, little link there Right. Yes, so, sir. So, if folks want to find out, you know, where they can get in, uh, your uh, discount coupon for your color work and your videos and everything, that'll be in the link to the show as it comes out afterwards. Just so people know. Yeah. I'm buying it. I can tell you that right now. Cool. Thank you. Hey, so, I got like a two for one discount or something. Yeah. <laughs> so raw shot, and this is the the shot off the balcony of the new house I just moved into. And then I just started, uh, uh, you know, it, it masked out the model and then uh, just started laying in poofy clouds and smoke and stuff and just sort of built up a little a little scene. So Where did you get all that smoke from? Was that like at your housewarming party? You just guys kind of bonged out or what happened? <laughs> magic. It's just magic. I just okay. shoot photos of magic separately and then drag the photos in and composite them later. Multi so, so there's layers of there's layers of this behind her, and then there's layers in front of her. So it looks like she's kind of enveloped in it, and then um, and then I just started playing with the color of the sky a little bit, so to bring in some of the colors from the the flowers in her hair and everything. And 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 next is the fun of bringing in the butterflies. And I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I know that there's going to be butterflies. I just don't know exactly what they're going to be doing. I imagine it's going to be something similar to the the, the already produced shot I showed you a few minutes ago. But um, that is what I'm working wow. on. Right now. Well, you know, you know when I when I see that stuff uh, from you, Jaime. <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you. So, uh, thank you very much, Jaime. Let's go over to Joe. I want to apologize ahead of time for having you go after Jaime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, really. yeah. Jaime should have gone last. Come on. Yeah, I didn't think man. about it. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd have thought about it for two seconds, I would have put him last. But. Viewers should I just fill. That's I have right. a ton yeah. of crappy photos I can show you. <laughs> can you guys see that? Yeah. That was, there's no shortage of those. Next time. Next time. <laughs> So uh, yeah, this is one. This is one I, I just did this week, and and uh, Gino said he want, wanted me to show it, so I thought I'd throw it up there first. So uh, this is you know one of our local one of our local scenes that we have not too far from the house here in San Francisco. That we have a lot of coast coastline, so I uh, I do go out and shoot it quite a bit. Um, I kind of like this one because I I think it actually shows a little bit on how my style for this kind of shot is <clears throat> has been evolving you know over over the last couple of years um, I, I shot a similar sunset from here like a year you know 15 months ago and I went back and I looked at that it was almost the same composition almost similar light um, I process it totally differently I'm not going to show you that one it's actually in the, in a folder somewhere uh, or in an album online um, you know but I, I I find that my, my style is evolving to even kind of more of a natural look, a little less, um, you know, uh, vibrant and kind of like initial wow factor in your face and a little more, I think, subtle. Um, and I find that I'm, I, I don't, I, I, I can spend more time looking at them. I don't get as, as kind of disinterested after an initial impression. Um, so, you know, that, 
shows a little bit of kind of my where my current seascapes are kind of going. Here's another one. Um, I'm also doing more uh, monochrome. You know, I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the uh, the kind of the simple. I I don't know if I would call it simple, but you know, uh, I don't know, less busy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, our kind of landscapes. Um, I'm shooting a little less of. You know, I'm not I'm not just throwing on the 17 millimeter right off the bat and going in and, and finding something in the foreground and you know you know making it take up two thirds or one third of the scene based on you know what's more interesting sky or ground and, and just going with that um, putting on a, you know a telephoto and, and picking pieces out of the landscape. So I think that image right there is an example. I, one of the things, one of my little pet peeves is people that uh, talk about rules of photography. And in, in that image right there, you know, you've got the horizon kind of dead center. Your main objects are all centered. And, you know, some people would say, oh, it's horrible. You know, you need to use phi and move it off to the side and, you know, have some dead space over here or something like that. But this image is just uh, great. And nobody should would think, oh, you know, you didn't follow some rules, and therefore this is not a pleasing image. Um, and uh, do you ever even worry about rules of photography? I mean, does, I think at a certain point, people just blow that stuff off. When you get comfortable enough with your style, you, yeah, you know, don't worry about rules. I, I definitely do. I mean, I always think about them, I guess, or at least, you know, the, the suggestions and kind of just classic things. Um, oftentimes... If I, I have an image I'm working on, or, or even I'm in the field and I'm, you know, composing it in my camera, you know, I'll have something and I'll be like, you know, I, I feel something looking at it, but I, I can't quite nail it. I can't quite figure out exactly how I want it. And I'll like, back to basics. You know what? Okay, let me, let me just, you know, let me pull up the little grids on the camera. Let me line things up. And oftentimes that'll kind of like maybe pull me in a direction that, I, you know, I end up with something that I want, um, but it may not be following that rules. But sometimes they're there, and you know, and and, and give give me guidance. All right, fair enough. Uh, here's another one, kind of uh, you know, monochromatic as well, although not black and white. This is also kind of more of a tight, uh, you know, piece of a landscape. This was uh, shot when I was actually with. Uh, uh, Mr. Bonacore and uh, Colby down in uh, Machu Picchu from Peru last um, last summer, hmm. and uh, you know that's certainly a place where you just put a nice big wide angle on and you get very kind of your classic Machu Picchu shots. And um, in the end, I found that I like these kind better. When I, when I came back and looked at them all, they're the ones that uh, that I enjoyed. Here, here's one, a little more of a, your traditional colorful, wide-angle landscape. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Iceland oh, um, yeah. from last summer. Yeah. This is uh, one of the, hopefully, uh, hopefully we get to go back to this waterfall um, in June. It's a little bit out of the way and that it's in the northern part of the island, so it's, you know, like an eight-hour drive to get up there. Um, but uh, this, one of the things I love about shooting in Iceland in the summer you know, this is, I'm going to guess, 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. Yeah, I was going to ask you if that was a long exposure because of the water. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, this is, this is actually only like a second. Hmm. You know, one second exposure. Um, it's pretty light out. I'm, well, it never gets dark in June, so, um, uh, you know, it's, you know it's, it's that far north. So, yeah, the, this is actually a huge... This is a huge waterfall, so you know, and most of the waterfalls there are, are quite large. So the waters are the water's moving really fast. So you actually don't even need a very long exposure in order to, to you know kind of get that smoothing out. Um, it gives you some some you know additional challenges to shoot as well. Here the challenge was, you know, it was it was just so misty. You just had to kind of like sit there and put a shower cap over your lens and wait for a, a break in the wind. And I must have sat there for an hour before I finally got a frame which, you know, didn't have a bunch of haze in front of it and I so can let me get this. Let me get this straight. You wait until you've got a break wind before you take a picture? <laughs> Sometimes. Is that what I just heard? Okay. 
That's a new tip for everybody out there. Make sure we get that in the show notes, Dave. Yep, breaking wind. Breaking wind, good for pictures. All right. <laughs> this is another one, Iceland waterfall, another favorite. This is in the like west part of the country. Um, hopefully we'll get back and, and get to do some of those. Um, I, I find that I like to shoot night quite a bit. Uh, here, here in San Francisco, um, you know, we have, we have a, a pretty nice skyline. And, uh, you know, when the weather's nice, it's great to get out and shoot at night. Um, just figuring out the, you know, it, it, with enough practice, it gets pretty easy to kind of figure out what your exposures are right away. So this is actually one from uh, Burning Man from last year. Mm. Um, which is a great place to go do night photography. So, you know, stay sober <laughs> when you take your uh, all of thousand dollars worth of equipment and head out into the desert. But uh, you know, bring a tripod and just set up. And there's so many things with moving lights. Um, it really makes for some stuff that you just don't see until you get back to your you know look at it on the screen or get back to your computer and you're like, wow, all those. Uh, you know, all those uh, glow sticks on the, on the bike wheels just looked amazing. Good stuff. Yeah, all last right. one. All right. Of course, Golden Gate Bridge. Ah, there yeah. it is. <laughs> I was going to say, what are, you, what are you doing? This is like, this is a couple, that's a couple weeks ago. That is awesome. Yeah. That one, uh, oh, okay. Now, how, how long of an exposure is that? That is uh, just under two minutes, 113 seconds. So I was counting off two minutes in my head because I, I I don't really have one of those fancy timer things. I just open it's up the shutter watch. and then I I just count and count in my head. And sometimes if I'm talking to somebody, I get a little off. You don't have a phone? You can just look at the timer on it or something? Yeah, but I don't know. That's always a pain because like two minutes, like looking at my phone, I stick it in my pocket and I inevitably hit a button and I like stop the stopwatch or you know wow. check some social media and miss it. So, oh, you're you're making stopwatches sound like brain surgery here. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all. At what time? That was a morning, four in the morning, one of those things. Yeah, this was probably. 5.30 a.m. This is a morning when actually probably 15 photographers showed up here because it was maybe the second day in a row that there were fog. Um, but I got this shot because I was there, you know, a half hour before anybody showed up. And I mean, the, invariably, almost all my best shots on, on these, these types of morning shots, it's the first one out of the camera. Maybe the yeah. second one if I didn't get the exposure right. Um, but you know when it's darkest, and so you know 15 other people showed up, but you know nobody else would you know got that shot because nobody was there. You know, 15 minutes later, it's a completely different scene. You know, your instincts usually are right, and uh, the, everything after that, you're just trying to figure out some new angle you can take on it. Yeah. Well, that's amazing, man. I love that. All I see all these shots from these different people on G Plus, and I just want to buy them all and just like. You know, like make wallpaper out of it and just cover my house. Right, me too. So good. All right, loader. Just load us up. Okay. Loader it. Loader it. I'll loader it up. Back in load I again. I'm just trying to find different ways to say loaders at this point. All right, there we go. I'm stalling. Okay. This is uh, from a trip to Death Valley in 2011. I think, uh, Joe, you were there. <clears throat> Probably not too far away when I took this photo. Oh, uh, this yeah. You notice that Lotus, that Lotus is not in this picture because there is not a bathroom there. Shut the... <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay, Gino. So this is a beautiful sunset on the racetrack, Playa, um, which is a really cool place uh, where the rocks move when you're not looking. This was the first day I met Lotus Carroll. Oh, that's right. You were there, too. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I remembered that you were there, Michael. She uh, didn't remember, but it's all right. Next up, uh, I do a lot of self-portraiture, and it uh, runs the extremes from, you know, Oh, nice. Pretty pretty to digging deep I, and 
and going grungy. And so See, this that, was. That's where I'm talking about that 14 hours it takes her every morning. <laughs> this <laughs> is what it looked like when I first wake up in the morning. Right. And so I thought I would take a photo of that to just document. Mm. Wow. Um, this is from the Colors Festival in 2012, uh, which is a really, really cool event to go to to get interesting portraits. Um, and I had a lot of fun there. I think even if I hadn't had a camera, I would have had a good time. It was really cool to see people like super, super happy and just partying and all the colored dust what? getting thrown around. We're still stuck on the image of you uh, looking angry. I think maybe your computer's no, stuck. No, I see her new shot. You do? Oh, it's maybe my computer's stuck. Angry. All so right, I'll we, shut up. Can everybody see the photo of the couple lying on the ground? Yep. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I see it. Okay. Um, I got a lot of really fun, cool portraits from that event, and I haven't processed even a third of them yet. Um, so definitely a fun thing for photographers to go to. Michael was at that as well. <laughs> hey, you remember. <laughs> um, here's another self-portrait. Different mood. Um, I do this a lot. I do a lot of self-portraits. I find I'm the easiest model to get along with. I have the same schedule as the photographer. So <laughs> I do use myself to, to do a lot of expressive photography. Oh, I like those. Do you ever hit on the model, Lotus? <laughs> She's so easy. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> um, this was actually taken from a moving car. Hmm. When I remember that that's how I took it, it blows my mind because it looks so... To me, when I look at the finished product, I think it looks very planned out and, and it wasn't. Um, Juan Gonzalez and I were on our way to a drink and click and I had my camera on my lap because I always have my camera within you know hands reach if not in my hand and I looked to my right and this gorgeous sunset was happening and I just whipped the camera up and is took that, some is that the uh, first Baptist church in Hyde Park I don't know what church that is honestly but it was around like 45th Street something like that yes yeah and so I got that you know so <laughs> sometimes you you'll get the photos that you love the best with great planning and care and sometimes they're just something that happens and that you catch. Serendipity. Yeah, that's my favorite word. Oh, well, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. Um, oh, whoop, yes. Wrong one. All right. Um, uh oh, wait. where'd he go? There he okay. is. This is another um, thing that I do very often, and that's take photos of my son. I started off doing that just to document his life, but he's a really great subject. Um, Joy is often captured as well as um, complete disgust. So. Nice, nice oral <laughs> hygiene too. Very good teeth. But so he's really fun to shoot. This is a photo that I uh, took in New York, and I got lucky when I was in New York, and it rained. Mm. Um, so you can get a lot of really beautiful reflections from water on the street in a big city. So I walked around one night. Um, walk through Times Square and and all around. I was out probably to at least 4 a.m. every night that I was in New York because you just don't ever have a point where you feel like it's everything is dead and it's time to go to sleep. Yep. So I had a really good time shooting there. Oh, um, a bird. This is a bird skull I found in an abandoned airport in Amarillo. Oh. Not the only picture of Lotus giving us the bird, I'm sure. <laughs> and this is just in my backyard. When is it I was raining? watering. Oh, it's watering, okay. I was watering the lawn and I thought, wow, look at all the really pretty uh bokeh that's going on, you know, in the background if I get down with my two point eight. And so it, sometimes, you know, you can find a shot right in your backyard. And yeah, this is yeah. the final one. This is another self-portrait. Mm. And this is more of a tragic. Yes. Um, and I took this photo with my <laughs> scanner, actually. That's cool. Oh, oh yeah. Whoa. So I think I, overall, like, it doesn't really matter what you're using. Capture an image, you know, as long as you're you're doing 
what feels right. And yeah, that's interesting because I've tried to use my scanner to take some landscapes around town, and it never works for me. <laughs> You're not getting close enough to the subject. I'm gonna have to take your scanner tutorial. Gina's gonna hold the scanner up to a tree branch. And yes. <laughs> yes, I like that. Scanner darkly. All right, loader. Thank you. All right, Bono, break it out. All right, dude. Let's see here. Bring the right, phone. So a lot of these shots probably people have seen because uh, they're all pretty old. But, like usual, I prepare five minutes before. So, this is what you're getting. All right. Hot to beat you! Yep. Woo. So, I don't have a fancy Lightroom catalog because I'm at work and everything's at home. Uh, but this is Machu Picchu. And uh, as Joe said, we were there last year in May. Um, and this shot, I was trying to do something different. You know, a lot of, uh, you know, I mean, there's a million photos from this exact vantage point. And so I was trying to do something that would set my photo apart. And I think that goes back to finding your style. So when I was moving the camera around on the tripod and trying to find the spot, I got this crazy sun flare that started yeah. showing in my, in my uh, viewfinder. And I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to try that because it's unique and it's going to set this shot apart from millions of other Machu Picchu uh, pictures. Yep. So I, I tried love that you left that in. Yeah. I kind of like sun flare. I mean, this is even a lot for me, but, you know, it kind of looked cool on the shot, so I kept it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going back there in three weeks, actually. I'm really excited. We're doing another Giving Lens workshop that myself and Kate uh, Havercroft are leading. And uh, so I'm excited. Three more weeks, and I'll be right back in this location. So do you take the Mayan Trail, or do you just get a bus? No, we wish. Um, you know, we're going to be down there for uh, seven Seven days is the workshop, so I mean the mine trail takes you know four or five days alone, depending on where right. you start. So, yeah. you know, we do a lot of different uh, activities. We work with the children down there. Um, we got a bunch of donated cameras to bring them and everything. We're going to teach them photography. So, uh, if you ever, a lot of these photos are from the Giving Lens workshop. So, if you're ever interested in joining us, it's really amazing, and you can find us on uh, the web at thegivinglens.com. Yeah. And I know you guys uh, do a lot of work with unwed mothers. That's amazing. So. Well, we do. Yeah, most of our work is with uh, children. And so <laughs> <laughs> I was that, was an old, that, was an old, that was an old Steve Martin joke. I had to throw yeah. it in. So this one is uh, from the Giving Lens Nicaragua trip. Uh, we've done three workshops down there, but this was the very first one. And a cool part about that trip is we walked through the barrios with the uh, – uh, children that we're working with down there and you know you just can't go to Granada Nicaragua and walk through the barrios it's just probably not a, a good thing to do so we go we're very welcome down there the people love us and we get these amazing portraits of the families and the kids and it's really incredible and I walked by this kid and I swear those are his eyes I did not touch his eyes did not photoshop them they are this incredible golden um, and they call him I think they, his nickname is Golden Eyes. Hmm. And I saw this really cool uh, background, and I just asked him to stand right in front of there in my broken Spanish, and he happily obliged. obliged. And I, I love this shot. It's one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, I like yeah. that one, too. Thanks. Uh, this is from the Festival of Colors in Utah that I was there with uh, Lotus and Scott Jarvie, Thomas Hawk, tons of other photographers. So the festival was over. And the sun was setting, and it's at this beautiful Harry Krishna temple in Spanish Fork. And uh, I think this was a handheld three exposure. Just quickly shot it and blended them together in uh, photomatics, and it came out to be a really cool sunset. I mean, a lot of people are surprised when I tell them this was taken in Utah. You mm -hmm. know, it's not the kind of building you would expect to see in, in Utah, but it's there, and it's incredible. This is from Cambodia, the Giving Lens Cambodia. Uh, trip and they have uh, this amazing town that six months out of the year is dry and then six months out of the year is completely submerged in about 10 to 20 feet of water because the lake rises and overtakes this town and so the only way to get through the town is on boats and all the houses you can see in the background uh, where the kid is in the background over here are on stilts and uh, so they have their boats tied up they bring their pigs and their dirt bikes up to the top and uh, yeah, they live for six months in this crazy floating village, and it's amazing. You just take a little tiny boat that you have to be incredibly careful. If you move one way or the other, you're falling off. Um, so it's very tough 
to photograph in these conditions, but I got some really cool photos. I think this is my favorite, though. It just kind of captures the, uh, the daily life of the people that live right. in this village. Incredible shot. Side note, Joe, uh, who just walked behind you there? Uh, that was my girlfriend, Tressa. Tressa. All right. Anybody walks behind, we're exposing them. So. <laughs> <laughs> I told Chris McCaskill, uh, Baldy, the president of Smug Mugs, to come down here, but he hasn't come down yet, but I want him to say hi. Well, this is uh, another shot from Cambodia, just a monkey on the side of the road. I loved his uh -huh. little mohawk, so I... I was lucky oh. to get that picture of him looking right at yeah, me. Yeah, teach him to do the monocore. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little hipster monkey. Yep. Uh, this is a recent one that I took with uh, Joe Azure and Casey and Ali. Uh, Sick. Yosemite a couple weeks ago. So. Just incredible. Thank you. Amazing. That more serendipity with those clouds, just perfect for you there. Yeah, you know, when I was there, we walked out, you know, right to this point, and I thought to myself, I always see pictures of El Capitan and pictures of three brothers, but rarely do you ever see them in the same frame, so I just set up and got this super quick. Man, that's awesome. I'd put that on my wall. Thank you. Uh, this ah, is there it is. I love San it. That's Francisco. my favorite shot of yours right there. Thank you. San Francisco from uh, Treasure Island, a secret spot that only me and Joe know about. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a million other people. And a million other people. But uh, the beacon on the Transamerica building on the right hand side is unique. It's really only on for about one month out of the year in December leading up to the holidays. So, uh, is that because of the fog or why do they turn it on? No, I think it's energy saving, energy and money saving. It's really expensive. It's very, maybe it's not that expensive, but I think it's just energy saving or something. I don't know. They just like turn it on for the holidays or something? Yeah, yeah I think it pretty much comes on like December 4th and stays until early January. Yeah, I can tell you that image right there is one of my favorite images on G+, Plus. period. Oh, thanks. I love it. It is Absolutely my favorite on Facebook and Google+, Plus, but i got to change yeah. it pretty soon. It's just uh, another image from Cambodia, a couple uh, children. I, I wrote a whole piece about how you shouldn't be... Uh, you know how it, how the you know giving children in these countries is actually, uh, you know, going against. It, it's encouraging them to continue to beg instead of uh, you know furthering their education and, and trying to get out of the situations that they're in. But this photo really struck me. You can see the background. She's held, holding a box, uh, and they're all begging. This was actually in a temple in Cambodia. I can't remember exactly which temple, but I loved it. Uh, Joe, oh, have, hey, hey, Michael, Joe's big leaking you here. He just brought a puppy into the scene. Oh, Joe, you jerk. Dude, that's bad. That's bad uh, hangout etiquette right there, Joe. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to pay attention to your photography. Uh, yeah, this is Jordan, Petra. Wow, and that I, is amazing. Thank you. It's I've really never amazing. seen. I've never seen that with the candles and everybody. I mean, obviously, there's a million pictures of Petra. I've never seen that before. Yeah, it's a Petra night ceremony. It happens every other night, um, and it's yeah, you just pay ten bucks or whatever, and you go in. It's really cool. It's amazing. It's very peaceful. I'd, I'd yeah. easily pay twelve bucks. Yeah, <laughs> even fifteen. Maybe that's pushing it. Yeah, uh, this is Utah Temple of the Valley and or Temple of the Sun and the Moon in uh, Capitol Reef National Park. So good. And I remember the day you posted that. I remember it. Yeah, this is in uh, Ivan Makarov's uh, Plus One collection, which is coming yep. out very soon. So if you don't have the book, go get it. It's amazing. I can't wait to get it. should be coming here in a couple weeks. And this is one of Bowling Ball Beach I took the other day with Joe. My first uh, time using a big stopper, thanks to Joe. Thank you, Joe. Mm. And I think that's, yeah, Sunrise that I also took with Joe. I seem to hang out with <laughs> Joe a lot. Yeah, you you got you, you're like kind of Trey and Tom of San Francisco. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the bromance. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a little uh, work. Yeah, so that's a Sunrise in San Francisco, and that's pretty much all I got. All right, well, that was a great set. Looks good. Thank all you. right, thanks for showing those. Nikolai, no yes. pressure. You, you just followed one, two, three, four amazing people. Yeah, it's kind of unfair. Um, but uh, I know. I do. And then after you, it's going to be Dave Veffer. So you're just you're just a sandwich of goodness. I know, right? All right, all right. I'm just going to show um, just a few 
different photos that kind of showcase different styles of mine and I guess tell a little bit about each of them. Uh, let's see. Can you guys see this all right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, I like that. So this is one of the first photos I ever took, actually, which is kind of why I included it. And it ended up being one of my favorites, which I found, you know, I guess pretty fortunate of me. Um, but yeah, now, this was... Nikolai, did you do like Jaime and like get little cutouts of, uh, you know, birds? and? Yeah, yeah, these are all cutouts, and I mm -hmm. put them on little metal poles and, you know, stuck them Awesome. Them I knew it. No, but uh, this was in Ecuador. Uh, this was at San Francisco Square, I think it was called, or somewhere in, in that, that area. But um, yeah, I just happened to get nice timing with the birds and the clouds and snapped a quick photo back when I didn't know what I was doing. And I edited it maybe six months later when I um, you know, saw it. I was like, wow, this is actually pretty cool. So I like that one a lot. Mm, very nice. Um, I like to play a lot with lights. So this one is just kind of playing with those lights. This one actually was on uh, the photo walk that uh, Gino took us on. He managed to sneak <laughs> us into some unfinished penthouse in Austin. And, uh, you know, the lights of the city in the background are really cool. You have this kind of urban industrial look on the inside, and this was a reflection in the mirror, um, kind of a silhouette. Yeah, it was like 50-something stories up there. Yeah, 52 or something like that. Something like that. Oh, I like that. This was in uh, Venice. This is kind of, I like to do a lot of street photography. I like to just kind of have an isolated subject. And uh, I got pretty lucky in Venice because we went during... I think it was it was in December and it was about 20 degrees, so there weren't a whole lot of tourists out. This was also at I think two in the morning, so it was freezing cold, or at least for me because you know we're used to Texas weather. And uh, yeah, I was able to just find this pretty cool scene in the middle of an alleyway. And uh, love it, I liked it. Yeah, that's so good. Uh, this was in Chinatown, <laughs> in New York City. This is on very a cool with uh, Juan and uh, Barry and a couple others from from Austin. We went to go and start up the drinking click in New York City, and we walked around Chinatown for a little while. And this guy just looked like such a badass that I had to take a photo of him. Um, I think he looked up and glared at me right after. Man, if you if you beat that guy in cards, you just fold him and don't tell him. Oh, yeah. He, I, I he will know. reach over and tear your esophagus yeah, out. That I guy. wouldn't sure lose him. I'd be too afraid. <laughs> yes. Uh, this one was in Toronto. Um, I was just oh, going sweet. out for a walk in the morning, and then I just kind of happened to see the sun rising. Um, and thought it was a pretty cool shot, so I, uh, you know, set it up real quick with my tripod that I happen to have with me, and uh, I got a nice photo of the skyline with the sun rising over in the distance. Very nice. And then this is one more from Venice, and then I like to play with lights. And it's Christmas time, so the lights were up in the air, and this guy was just walking by himself. And I, I wanted to kind of capture a little bit of the motion, so set it on just enough time so that you kind of see him slightly ghosted, but. Um, mm -hmm. I also like this because it provides kind of a unique view of um, this is one of the biggest bridge in Venice, pretty much, and it's always packed with tourists. And I just thought this was an interesting way to showcase what's still distinctively Venice, but in a way that a lot of people haven't seen. Yeah, kind of like Michael, where he left the sun flare and, and Machu Picchu. I love that you left the ghosting in. So many people try so hard to take all those little artifacts out, and I think they're great. I think they add such a wonderful element to pictures. Exactly. No, I, I agree completely. Um, and that's all. So, oh, it's fantastic. Wonderful. Those are great. Thank you. You know what? Yeah. Hold on. I'm going over. Where's the Google effects? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do everything. <laughs> there we go. I love it. All right. Now, next, we're going to have the man that every girl out there is thinking about right now, Dave <laughs> Pepper. Dave, right. bring the heat, Dave. All right. This is... Uh, my wife and daughter and I, we went to Bear Mountain State Park in New York a few weeks ago. These are a few shots from there. This is the, uh, this is the hotel there. What kind of lens are you sporting? It's my Panasonic 7-14. Wow. <laughs> Sweet. Love it. Nice. For my micro, micro Four Thirds. This is also up at Bear Mountain. This is actually... Lens flare. That is actually... Bear Mountain. Yeah, and is that some uh, Trey uh, uh, Lightroom effects there? No. Presets? Oh, it looks like one of his uh, presets. I like that. Uh, this is a. Uh, I recently got the Nick Suite, so this is a lot of color oh, effects Dave, you'll be seeing. Dave says no. That's one of the Dave Veffer Lightroom presets. You jerk. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is also at Bear Mountain. This is if you walk down, there's a long path that goes all the way down to the Hudson River. And uh, mm. this is along the way. Very cool. This I is like the Hudson. Cereal, but... Thank you. This is the Hudson River. Nice. With a really cool cloudscape going on that seemed to follow the river all the way down. Yeah. It's like a Boston album cover. <laughs> anyway. And on our way back, uh, we were walking back, and there just happened to be a train coming, so I ran up this little path and just shot a whole bunch of shots off. And <laughs> I like it. That's a long that train coming. Yeah. Is that handheld? Yes. Nice. So you guys are all so young, you don't even get that all these comments I'm making are actually songs from famous rock albums. But go ahead, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> long train coming. Before MTV? Doobie Brothers. Come on. This all is... Right. Uh, this is up in uh, Rampo Reservation in Mawa, New Jersey. I, I just got a really cheap, crappy 10-stop filter that makes everything turn purple, so I really had to go crazy with the color. But I'm going to get a big stopper now because I just wasn't happy with the results. But... This is also up in the reservation. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, yeah very cool. It's a little creek there. Yeah. Looks creepy. Ah, uh, <laughs> Where's the Google effects? <laughs> oh, no. oh, there it was. Well, he told a joke, so I meant to give uh, him the high. <laughs> there we go. This is just uh, the same lake with a nice. big tree, and that's it. All right. Good job. Man, apparently people liked it. There was a lot of applause there. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. All right. So, uh... Let's see what I can show here. I don't even, you know what? I don't even think I have anything dialed up. Let me go over here to Google Plus and uh, go over to Gino. I got some photos from the uh, Rat Rod Rally that I've been sharing on Google Plus. And um, yeah, I know. Nice. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So, all right. So here's uh, this is the Sam. If you remember American Graffiti. John Milner drove a 32 five window, and here was one going down the drag just like it. Nice. And uh, you can see I left in all the little bokeh and lens flare, too. I like all that stuff. That looks good. Yeah. Here's, uh, this is, I used one of Trey's Lightroom presets on this one. That's sweet. Yeah, this is a nice, big, huge Harley. It had an interesting... Uh, uh, headlight that kind of drew me and then I waited I sat here and waited for this Cadillac to come down the road I want because there was a bunch of you know just Pontiac G6's and uh, Honda Accords and just stuff that was gonna ruin the picture so I waited until some really pimp car came along and this Cadillac came along just at the right moment and I, I thought it kinda added a nice little side effect to this Harley so, this is a burnout. Um, there was lots of burnouts going on, and uh, I was trying my best to try to capture the energy and the smoke of uh, guys doing burnouts in the middle of a busy intersection with a bunch of people all over the place. It was very uh, unsavory and uh, not safe at all. But uh, I thought this one kind of captured the whole energy of the of the moment pretty well. This is a friend of mine, Colt Verrett. He owns this product. And uh, so I took this image of it. Uh, also, on this, these are all on South Congress on a Saturday night two weeks ago, I think. And this is the Continental Club. Uh, world famous Stevie Ray Vaughan played his first gigs here at the Continental Club. And uh, so I always try to go down there and get a shot of the... I like the sign. Try to get some of the crowd. You can see there's some, some interesting folks outside. Uh, here's a GTO, also going up and down this drag. Uh, a little shot of that GTO. The interesting thing about all these shots is I literally just uh, walk out into the road and put my hand out to people like, stop, stop your car. And they have no idea what I'm doing. They just see me standing there with a camera. And then I kneel down in front of them and start taking pictures. And I usually take as many pictures as I can before they just, you know, take off and run into me. So uh, any. Anytime I would see an interesting car, I would just walk out on the road and stop them. That's kind of fun. People love it when you do that to them. 
<laughs> Here's a guy with a, uh, he had this little bitty car. These are these pedal cars. I don't know if you guys know anything about pedal cars or not, but they're very valuable. They're old metal cars that were made back in the 30s and 40s. And um, this is before plastic and everything. And they would make these little cars that your kid, as you'd get in as a kid, and you'd push the little pedals down on the floor to make the wheels go around, and you could drive around on them. Well, they're very valuable. This little pedal car right here is worth a couple of thousand dollars. And I asked the guy who had it, I said, can I stick that in the middle of the road and take a picture of it like it's driving down the road with all these other cars? And amazingly, he said, sure, go ahead. If my car gets run over, then you're buying it. So, um, But, uh, of course, everybody saw me you know, sitting in the middle of the road, and they stopped and let me get this picture. So, But I liked it. I thought it was a cool little pedal car. There's a there's an old Chevrolet um, that was actually taken in the middle of the day, as you can see by the reflections here on the hood. But uh, the background was very busy. There was lots of other people and telephone poles, and it was just not a very pretty background. So I just kind of blacked it all out and just focused on the grill and the hood. And um, I thought it came out pretty powerful. Yeah. Better this way than showing the background. And here's a guy, I think this is my last one, but this guy, he was pretty radical. He was down uh, by Joe's Coffee Shop. This is my favorite coffee shop in town, great coffee. And uh, he, he, had, uh, he was injecting fuel through his big stacks here, and he had spark plugs up there, and he'd, he'd light them up, and he had these antlers on the front, and he had this deer skull on his roof, and it was just as loud as can be. He had no filters. I mean, that's just... You can, I don't know if you know anything about cars, but I mean, this, this exhaust is coming straight out of the engine and blowing out right here, so it was just as loud as it can be, and uh, everywhere this guy went, he was just shooting flames out the top of his car. It was really cool. I liked it a lot. So that's it. Um, that was my little uh, foray. Yeah, I, I thought it was pretty cool. I liked it a lot. So, all right, uh, this is the uh, time of day where we share our G-plus discoveries. If, uh, if you have any, we'll share them. I'll go ahead and share mine first, um, since it takes me forever to figure out how to do it. Um, this guy right here, Nev, Nev, I can't ever remember how to say his last, Nev Nels, there it is. Nev Nels, um, I really like his work. Um, he's got a nice style to his flow. He takes these unusual angles. He's always flipping things around and... Um, I just like his work in general, and uh, Nev Nevels is somebody who doesn't have a lot of followers. On and look, even this one right here, taking a picture of all these cars with the city and behind it. Uh, he just always has a nice, unique way of finding something interesting to shoot, and uh, I like him quite a bit. And uh, so, go check him out. That's my G plus discovery. How about Jaime? You got anybody that you can throw out there for us? I had, to, I had to dick somebody up like really quickly last minute, and I don't know if somebody with uh, I think he has, says he has thirty six thousand people have him in circles. I don't know if that qualifies. That's fine. Sure, so. less than a million. Anything under what uh, you know what I refer to as the Lotus uh, bar, you know, more than a million, don't share them. Am I am I screen sharing this? No. How do, how do I do this? Yes, yeah, so screen share. <laughs> yeah, pre yeah, you can. I'm just saying you're not right now. Oh, hang on. Who's that behind you there? <laughs> My fiance, Shantia. I know. I'm just, anytime somebody walks back, I try to embarrass him. But I don't think that works with Shantia. You couldn't even begin to embarrass her. <laughs> Jeez. There she is again. Yes, Hi, Shantia. Hi. There you go. <laughs> All right, there we go. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Michel Delange. It looks like French, but it says he's in South Africa. So, all right. Sorry for not pronouncing his name correctly. I'm sure I'm not, but I just first first thing I noticed was the color consistency. That's just what I'm. That's what I'm drawn to, like right off the right off the bat. And uh, someone someone with the clear, defined vision. You can just look at a, these little sequences of photos that he's done. It's like, wow. And I don't know what I'm supposed to say here. No, you're just sharing. Much. Yeah, you're yeah we're going to put their name.
names in the show notes so that folks can go check them out and uh, maybe they can get a little uh, overdue exposure. Well, there's, just, there's such a consistency in vision and, and toning and mood, and that's just, I really, really like that a lot. Are you saying that this person has a voice in their photography? I would, I would definitely say so. Ah, Absolutely. the theme arises once again. Yep. All right. Thank you, Jaime. Joe, knock us off our feet with your discovery. Uh, let's see what we got here. Whoops. Oh, hold on. I forgot how to screen share. Why don't you just show your girlfriend or your puppy again? That seems to be weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Who knows? I think my screen share just went, went out of whack, so you have to come back to me. All right. Well, let's go with Lotus, then. Okie dokie. My discovery is Sean McClure. Yeah. There you go. Big his, Sean. His cover photo on his page is actually a really good example. He's got a lot of different photos. And I, what I really love about his work is that there's a broad range of subjects and there's a lot of vibrancy and a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. So when I look yeah. at his, the, the things that he shares in his stream, uh, I see that he has an attention to detail in the world around him and just like a very attentive photographic eye and I appreciate that. And so uh, he's, he's very consistent in his sharing as well. Yep. So very regularly posting just really beautiful work and I just I I really enjoy seeing his photos come through my stream so if you want a more beautiful stream circle up Sean McClure Sean pretty much rocks he is an awesome Sean guy does. too and just really great to talk to and he's he's a cool guy he's very interactive too he's, he's, he's everywhere. very engaging very engaging yeah totally yeah. when I think of Sean you know All right, all right, all right. So, um, all right, let's go, Michael. All right, all right. Disclaimer: This guy is an amazing photographer, uh, very smart guy, but he's also a friend. Um, but I think his work deserves to be seen by the world. His name is Casey McAllister, and he is from Denver. He's a recent transplant here to San Francisco, and uh, me and Joe have had the pleasure of shooting with him many times, but. He's got a lot of awesome work. He took this one the other day up in uh, Point Reyes. Really cool, foggy. I love that photo. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, Golden Gate Bridge in the fog, trying to take a page out of Joe Azure's book. And he does a, he does a really cool thing. Every month he releases this uh, desktop calendar uh, for free. You just go onto his, uh, every month he, he uploads this and puts it out there for everyone to save and use as a desktop background. So that's really cool. Uh, more Golden Gate Bridge, uh, Moon, Moonshine. Amazing. Yeah. You're doing that. Are you telling me that that was straight out of the camera like that? Joe was there. Joe, weren't you there? You're on mute, Joe. Yeah, yeah, I was there. I haven't, I haven't processed stuff from that night yet, but definitely yeah, a lot of stuff. But, you, but you're telling me when you were there, there was a beam straight no. out of the heavens like that. Yeah, I, I actually left two minutes before this photo was taken because that was like, oh, it's, you know, I got all my photos for the night. And then I left, and two minutes later, he texted me. And he said, man, you just missed this, the moon, broke through, and it was amazing. And sure enough, he got it. So I'm sure wow. Joe was, it was good. Smart too. Yeah, I'm uh, definitely going to have to hate him. Yeah, really cool Yosemite shot of Half Dome with the moon behind it. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot of really cool stuff, and he also makes uh, some really awesome presets uh, that he released. Uh, they mimic a very popular social photo sharing website, but I'm not allowed to say the name. <laughs> no, he's not allowed to say the name. <laughs> oh, yeah. He can't. Well, yeah. this is being recorded, so out of fear of lawyers and lawsuits, I'm not allowed <laughs> to say the name either. Yeah. Well, he has a nice face and a book that you yes. can check out. Yeah. And I just want to say one more thing that isn't actually about Casey, but Jaime's music is awesome, and tomorrow I'm going to share a time-lapse video that I made with Jaime's music in the background, so it's really cool. He doesn't even oh, know I did that. I, I had no idea. Would, the only way I could tell him was now, so I'm telling you. <laughs> so now I can't say no. <laughs> I, I expect a reshare. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Whatever you do, don't play the music or Dave will mute you. Yeah. 
Now, Jaime, don't you have, you've got like a little uh, music project you've been working on for quite a while. Big music project. Yeah, yeah big music project. All right, sorry. How's that yeah. coming along? Are we anywhere near it, the uh, finale? I hope, I hope to finish at least the recording, the tracking of it before the end of this year. So that'll, that'll put it at the nine, nine plus year mark. Right. Man, yeah. I, I've been hearing about it for so long. It's like a... It's like I'm getting this tattoo, you know. I just keep putting an extra mark on it every year for, you know, how long it's going on. But I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, you sure. won't end up with the full sleeve. But yeah, <laughs> I, want to get it, I want to get it done this year, hopefully. All right. So, who did we miss here? Joe, we have to go back to you. You missed Yeah. It? All right, you got it figured out? Yeah. All so, right. I, I actually already um, had uh, sh shared, his, shared his link onto the, onto the, so yep, for the notes. So this is a guy named uh, Steve Banderas. He's uh, uh, local to the Bay Area, um, so I have, I've had the pleasure of meeting him a couple of times. We actually uh, co-met a photo walk. Actually, what, maybe, maybe uh, Bonacor got his shot from under the bridge that morning at like 5 a.m. Uh, where 50 people showed up to hike a mile in the dark and go take some of those pictures. But um, I, I look at this guy's work and I get a lot of inspiration from it. I, you know, it makes me want to try a lot of different things that I don't do today. Um, he does a lot, almost all monochrome, but um, he does do some color. But he does a lot of, a lot of, you know, really long exposures. Um, really good at capturing like a lot of motion, even though there's like, you know. Just real kind of stagnant still scenes. I uh, just really enjoy his work, so uh, definitely go take a look at you know a lot of the stuff he does. He does shoot with film a lot as well. Not that I have a big desire to shoot in film. It's kind of a lot of work and, and hassle, but um, uh, he definitely makes it work. Joe, you're uh, you're you're missing one of his coolest images. He actually got a. Lightning yeah. strike over the Golden Gate Bridge, which I mean, if you know, it's impossible with, to get with fog. I've only seen two pictures of the Golden Gate Bridge with lightning, and his is one. Wow. Well, don't show it because now everybody will have to go look him up and uh, and find it. I mean, here, here's the uh, the small version. Well, well he somebody... has it on Google Plus, or at least I didn't see it. So, all right. Well, there it is. So go go look him up so you can see the big version. All right, thanks. How about Nicol Nikolai? Nikolai? Yes. What All you right. got for us? So believe it or not, um, my discovery was the same one as Jaime's, but I managed uh -oh. to find another one in the meantime. Well, that just tells you how good that guy was. <laughs> so I like this guy, uh, Chip Phillips. He's a, uh, I guess, mostly landscape uh -oh. photographer, and uh, I just really like his, uh, you know, the colors, time of day, everything that he posts about them. They're um, they're just really well taken. Um, don't have a whole lot to say outside of that, other than I know right. that with landscape photography, there's a lot that goes into um, you know understanding the time of day and utilizing the sun position, things that I have no understanding of, but that you know good landscape photographers know, and um, I think he does a really good job of that. Yeah, you don't need to say anything when the work's that good, right? Yeah, yeah he's really good. I love those. Yeah, so these are they're yeah, pretty good. His, his processing is really top notch. He and the other guys that he works with, that uh, I forgot the name of the uh, name of the company, but um, definitely if you're interested in um, learning how to use Photoshop for this style of processing, uh, he and a guy named Sean Bagshaw have some you know great tutorials um, on on doing that stuff. Well, that's good, Dave. Got anybody you want to uh, throw out there for us? No. You are so selfish. <laughs> oh, Dave. I I've never. It's all about Dave. Yeah, I guess if you're Dave Effer, though, I mean, wh wh who are you going to share? You're Dave Effer. Yeah, his his G plus discovery is Dave Effer. Yeah, yeah, that's the world's discovery right there. But we do have a giveaway to finish off, I do believe, right, Mike? We have a giveaway. What yeah. Wait, weren't you paying attention at the beginning of your own show? Oh, I thought you were going to do it later. Well, this is pretty later. Oh, this is later. That's right. I forgot. <laughs> we did a little time travel. It's an hour and a half into the future now. Uh, so, yeah, we randomly picked a number. I asked, uh, behind the scenes, I asked Dave to pick a number. And I hope did. it's mine. Is it mine? Nope, you lost. 
It what is good a, is hosting a show? <laughs> it is a gentleman, congratulations, to Eamon Kassan. And it looks like he's from Austin. Yeah! yeah. He's probably been on a drink and click or two. Indeed. But uh, he posted a really cool photo. I'm assuming it's from Austin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming it's from Austin. Uh, it, it's a bridge. If if uh, you look at it in the uh, event, I've never been to Austin, but it looks to be Austin. So it's a really cool night shot with some some uh, screen street share. It. Screen share. Yes, I will do that. Now, have you given uh, Dave his name? So uh, sorry that I hold on. Um, my phone's going crazy there. All right. So Dave, do you know who this is? So we can well, make Michael, sure. Michael. Michael will be the one contacting him. So. Oh, okay, yes. Michael. Yeah. So right there, really. Oh, yeah. Nice yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Thing. Penny is that Austin? Bridge. Yeah. yeah. Trey, Trey actually lived in a neighborhood that was like two minutes from there when he lived uh, here in Austin. Well, very cool. Cool shot, and uh, I will be contacting him. He won a 16 by 24 medal from Bay Photo. Very that awesome. Is super Congrats. cool. Awesome. Thank you. And now, who is the sponsor? Yeah. Uh, it is from Bay Photo, and they are Bay an amazing Fun. photo lab in. Uh, just outside of Santa Cruz, California, and so Excellent. Smug Mug and Bay Photo decided to give away a medal to one of our lucky viewers, and they do great work. I do all. I do all. Actually, printing there. What's the size behind you, Joe? There it is, right there. That's a metal print behind Joe. That one, that's eighteen by thirty-two metal print. So there you go. That's a, there's there's almost. Print, so here's another. Print. Here's another metal print from Bay Photo. Let's see. All right. Nice. There you go. And actually, if you look. Lotus has one too. Yeah. <laughs> and if you look at my screen, those are all from Bay Photo. Those are all uh, 24 by 36. Uh, one of my photos and Colby Brown, Scott Jarvie, Elijah Lacardi, and Michael Fry. So. Sounds like they should be sponsoring the show too. <laughs> yeah, they do great work. They do. Yes. Well, I appreciate all of you. Thank you all. Hi, May. Uh, and uh, Joe, Lotus, Michael, Nikolai, and even you, Trey Ratcliffe, slash Dave Beffer. That we secret appreciate. identity has been revealed. Yes. I would also... Yes. Go ahead. I would like to thank you, Gino, for mm. being awesome. Yeah, well, thanks, Gino. well, you know, when I think of me, what I think of is... <laughs> <laughs> Poor Dave. <laughs> I think he just got kicked out of his own show. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, I appreciate all of you being here, most especially Dave Effer for putting up with me. Hopefully Trey still has a show when he returns. I haven't burned the thing to the ground, but I have to admit that was my goal. That only so, costs 86 bucks, though. No, no I, I'll pay 90 So uh, thank you all for coming, and uh, one, two, three... Scene.